Good day and welcome to the Namibia Annual Sport Expo. I'm your host Jesse Jackson Kauraitha. Today I will be joined by several sport administrators from different sport federations who will be sharing their views on their federations. Good day and welcome to the Expo. I'm Jesse Jackson Kauraitha and I'm not alone in studio. Joined by Namibia Basketball Federation representative, that's Titus Mohafa. Titus, welcome to the Expo. Thank you for having me. Well, um, as we get into the proceedings, um, I would just like to know, Titus, um, what's your position at the Federation? I'm the Namibian Basketball Federation Secretary General. Uh, that basically means that I'm the one in charge of the uh, day-to-day operations of the Namibian Basketball Federation. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us um, who else is um, accompanying you into the, the leadership? Yes, the Namibian Basketball Federation has quite, we've been elected last year, December, and we are currently um, charged by or led by Mr. Nigel Mubita, who's the president. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the vice president is Mr. Elifas Haifidi, pardon me. And then, of course, me, the secretary general. And then we have a development officer by the name of Sylvia um, Mushabati. And then we have a treasurer by the name of Henok Shilongo and the marketing officer by the name of Kenny Okenaundo Karamata. Thank you so much, Titus. Mm -hmm. um, that's quite wonderful. Mm -hmm. Of course, we want to um, look into the Federation itself. Many wouldn't have uh, uh, the slightest idea of when it was established. And of course, we want to hear a bit of history about this Federation. We know that basketball has been played, especially if you look at the UN Plaza there, where um, we have seen a lot of action over the years. But um, we just want a bit of history about this code um, and I want you to actually interact and tell me about it, um, convince me also about the history. So I want you to look at me. Yes. So basketball is quite an exciting sport. Um, uh, we've been uh, in existence since the 1990 and we became a member of the FIBA, which is the International Basketball Federation in 1993. And we've been a member ever since. Uh, basketball in Namibia has has had a lot of ups and downs, mm -hmm. but ever then, ever since we became a, mem a member of FIBA, we've been having uh, school leagues and national leagues. I think in the late 90s, basketball was one of the number one sports codes in the country. Mm -hmm. But of course, due to management and due to other um, other issues, the Basketball Federation really went on a downward spiral. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the past 10 years, we've been really hard at work. Um, people that were charged with actually managing the Federation to really revive the sports and bring it to the heydays of basketball. Um, when we talk about basketball now in Namibia, we are talking about a total of at least 30 schools playing basketball and a total of 1,200 learners um, that are in actively in school playing basketball. We are talking about a population of 500 senior players that are playing. Okay, I'm going into the bit of the history. Mm -hmm. um, are there any still members um, from the core of the leadership still involved in, in the code, I mean, in terms of um, structures? Um, so. The bit of the history is we are active in, right now we are active in nine regions. Uh, by the time of our elections, there were only seven active regions. Um, the core of basketball since the 1990s, I mean, the, the original founders are not necessarily involved, mm -hmm. but they are here on the day-to-day -day time advising us on what to do. Um, I'm talking about Delipura Hamutuma. Mm -hmm. um, I think he was the president in 2003. Mm -hmm. And if you look back, Wolfgang Kleiner went back to Germany. He was also involved in the federation, mm -hmm. but we had various presidents in the past on that. Mm -hmm. um, and most of them they play an advisory role now for the federation and it's not just about um, actually looking at it in a sense of um, looking at where the sport is but basically advising us to say well this is what uh, basically let's say lessons from the past mm -hmm. uh, and they are don't do that do this because we've tried that and it didn't work yes um, it's always <laughs> important to have that um, structure you know in all leadership structures it's always important to have the core and especially when it comes to sport you always need your legends and everyone involved um, mm -hmm. it's always important i know of it um let's look at uh, the development side of things um what has been the basketball federation's plans and development um, over the years what have you developed and what are the plans ahead um over the past 10 years and let's say 15 years i was heavily involved in the basketball development side where i started off basically with uh, reviving the high school basketball league in 2011 um, and uh, it, it, it's actually 
taken off from 2011 and it's been it's the high school league that people know about today it's called the Namibian basketball school league with the numbers and figures which i reported earlier um, but if you look at what we have planned now as the new federation that was just elected we have launched uh in march or may pardon me i'm not sure we launched our five-year development plan which is which has four pillars and basically those pillars are uh, effective governance um, um national teams um, and national league structures and of course the sustainability of the basketball um, this basketball fraternity or let's say basketball federation uh, and if i go into what we mean by the first pillar when we talk about effective governance we are talking about uh, making sure that we are active in all 14 regions and basketball is being used as a tool or a vehicle to actually enhance young people's life to actually change lives and when we talk about our national team i think since 2003 through the naboza naboza is basically Namibia, Botswana, and Zambia. This was an initiative that was started by Dr. Delipula Hamutuma in 2003 and died when Namibia had the, their first national team playing across across regional games. Uh, we, we, we have also revived that and now we are looking at actually having our, uh, we have appointed national team coaches that were appointed recently and are, we are busy reviving the national team structures basically. So mm. And in terms of, uh, you, you speak of development, um, I want to know about the involvement of youth. Um, this is quite uh, strictly speaks to development, right? In terms of um, the young, the upcoming, and this is what's the interest like how is the interest i'm sure it speaks directly to development what's the interest there from the general public the youth the parents and all that uh when you look at basketball basketball is a fun and hype sport so that means already we speak to the to the youth demographic so if you look at the young people that have been inactive in basketball over the past five years they are taking charge they are the ones in charge of the school league structures they are the officials they are they are the the refs and they are the team coaches if you look at the type of schools we have i'm talking about uh, where we didn't have numbers of schools playing and now we have a lot of numbers of schools playing and when we are talking about development we are talking about Basketball is now divided in two categories. Uh, the 3x3, which has been introduced as an Olympic sport code, and the 5on5, which is also an, an Olympic sports code. Now, if you look at the development structure from the north to the south, uh, we have about eight high-performance basketball centers in the country. Okay, um, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. um, it's quite uh, quite wonderful. Mm. It's a wonderful story to, mm. to hear that basketball is actually pushing into development, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, we have our Christine Bombers, um, these are the success stories. We mm -hmm. have our Frankie Fredericks, these are the success stories. Um, what are some of the success stories of the sport code in Namibia and internationally? Um, of course, first I would like to congratulate Christian Boma for winning. Um, mm -hmm. That's always um, a good place to start and she's a role model for all young people. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the basketball fraternity, of course, you need to look at what we have done over the years. We have our own own let's say influencers or let's say role models to others and the first name that comes to my mind of course is mike mukumbuta mm -hmm. he's been playing in the bnl league in south africa and he was actively involved in actually shaping the type of basketball crop of players we have mm -hmm. during his time in south africa he he really motivated came down with his flights with his own money to make sure that he's motivating creating a path for the young people to have something to look out to and he established something called the money mike ambassador award where he was actually helping young people to get to south africa to play but if you look at what we have done over the years we've been to three olympic qualifiers for the 3x3 in both male and female category and uh, you're talking about the team that participated in doha recently and you look about shirimuye john Moenai and is a name that's becoming very popular in basketball with his basketball fraternity taking on all the old veterans and all the young veterans showing that it's his time to play basketball mm -hmm. and he's really developing the game of basketball and he comes from the technical basketball academy i mean he's grounded in the sports he's an engineer student at um at, at, the, at the namibia university of science and technology mm -hmm. and he's actually showing the whole concept of student athlete that means he puts his schoolwork so first what you say yes what you're saying it's um he directly this is about education is important as well at sports mm -hmm. so he's trying to it's a way to encourage and motivate um like those upcoming basketball um uh, enthusiasts and players to actually focus on basketball and as well 
as education at the same point. So that's also a motto from the Basketball Federation, I must believe. Yes. Uh, to echo the words from the president um, of the Zambian basketball, Nigel Mobita, he always says that development is key, mm -hmm. and but to develop these play players, they need to become student athletes. Mm -hmm. So for us, it, when it comes to the development stage, we use basketball as, as a tool to educate, to change lives of young people, to make sure that they are actively participating in, in, in um, positively engaging manners. And we always want to have role models that are pursuing an, 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 a professional career, yet also not neglecting their athlete side. Um, and that is basically what we are doing when it comes to development structure. We are really linking our sports with education. Um, and I mean, sports is a, is, a, is a great equalizer. It creates that platform for a boy child and a girl child to equally educate. Said it better. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I'm sure the viewers have heard and they, some are really interested in finding out more, even registering their teams and all that um, because it's a sport code um, and there are teams out there, there are um, clubs out there that are just in the wild and of course I would just like to know whether there's any processes involved and what are the fees as well. So with the Basketball Federation, we are charged with developing basketball in the whole country. So we are not necessarily an entity that takes in clubs. So what happens is we are elected into power by regional associates. Like I said earlier, we are active in nine regions now. Um, those regions are then the ones that are tasked with developing basketball in their specific regions. And then in these regions, you'll find basketball clubs, you'll find basketball development programs like academies. And those are the people that you need to talk to. We as a federation, if you reach out to us, we'll put you in line with wherever you are, depending on which part of the country you are. Yeah, and, and our marketing officer, Kenny Karamata, is really in charge of that. We are our Facebook platforms, we are Instagram platforms, but we can also be reached, of course, on our cell phone number, um, which is 081381 where we can actually share with you who to talk to in your specific region if you're interested in basketball. Like I said, now we, we have a high performance center in Karas because it's the part of the, re of the country where we're not in. Um, but if you do reach, us to, uh, reach out to us as the basketball fraternity, we'll put you in, in, in direct contact of where you are. Um, our senior leagues have, kick, uh, have kicked off with All-Star Games recently. That means that there are already active registration happening, which closed yesterday for the senior league, but I mean, let's say for the senior national league that's happening. Uh, the school leagues have kicked off with a tournament. I mean, the year is gone, but we are trying to remain active. Our biggest, biggest thing that will be happening is in 3x3, which is still open for registration. So if you are interested in playing basketball, we just need four players to participate in your specific region and qualify to the Reed Fontaine National Tour that we are going to have at the Reed Fontaine Center in Ochoa Super Region and this is open to anyone that's interested in playing well, basketball. Titus, thank you so much. I'm sure many of you, many of them will reach out to you. Um, as a person who really um, enjoyed the likes of Michael, Jordan and all, you can name them, those guys. Um, I'm privileged or I would say I enjoyed having you here in studio today and at the Expo. So thank you so much, um, Mr. Mohafa. And from me, Jesse Jackson, Carl Reiser. Ciao. Thank you very much for having us. We can't wait to be together again. But until then, let's stay safe. You know, a few weeks ago, I would never do this on a Saturday morning. Back then, I was standing in line all day. Now it's just like that. Mm, you are using the FNB banking app like I told you. Girl, it saved my weekend. Now I can do all my banking on this. Payments, transfers, checking statements, even opening accounts. Just, just like, like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I tell you what my husband even did? Even me. Even me, I want to save time with the, what's the name of the app? FNB app. Don't be left behind. Make the switch to the FNB app, online banking or cell phone banking and change the way you bank to change your life. FNB, how can we help you?